I'm Jix Clamor, uh, currently the Deputy Secretary General of Karapatan Alliance uh, Philippines. I'm also a former advocacy officer of uh, Health Action for Human Rights. I am actually an, uh, an acupuncturist in a community health uh, management and development uh, worker. Prepare this tea before we chat. See you then. Hello, I'm Laura Bayans. I'm a member of Intel Globalized Solidarity and a volunteer for Viva Salud. So these are two social movements here in Belgium. And my advocacy work is focused on human rights issues in the Philippines. And for today's chat, I'm actually making myself a cup of coffee. Hi. Hi. Kamusta? Oh, I'm Laura. Ito. ito here. Uh, good to see you again, Laura, after three years or more. <laughs> yeah, Last yeah. time I, I, we met was in... If you will recall, I met you in Antwerp. There yes. was a forum organized by, I think, uh, our colleagues in Antwerp. So uh, how are you now, uh, Laura? I'm okay. O okay lang naman. Um, so I'm still based in Antwerp. <laughs> oh, okay. um, I'm, I'm currently on lockdown and here here in Antwerp. And yeah, it's. I think it's, I believe, yeah, indeed, it's been three or four years, perhaps. Um, so yeah, it's... Uh, it's been a uh, really interesting journey, and yeah, it's great jigs that we are able to actually reconnect again through this platform. Yeah, I know the this virus really, you know, uh, wanted us to, be, you know, uh, <laughs> it's like putting a barrier between two people, or actually people, <laughs> the people. <laughs> but of course, uh, those virus, this virus will not. Uh, deter us from doing what we are doing right now and we're like the uh, the vaccine against this virus <laughs> actually it was my my parents who actually introduced me to the social realities in the philippines when i was still young my father used to uh, bring me to communities of the indigenous peoples in uh, Central Luzon, in Southern Tagalog, in the communities of we call right now the, the Aitas or the Dumagats. No? And uh, that's the first exposure I had. But I uh, experienced an immersion in those communities. Uh, you can, I ask myself, no? so how come there is this huge disparity between communities who are living in the countryside and communities in the urban. Luckily, I have some uh, uh, mentors or professors they had, they had. And we had uh, length uh, conversations of what's really going on in our country, in the society. So somehow they actually, in a way, I could say that uh, they did actually uh, further influence me in doing something not only for myself, but for my fellow Filipinos as well, especially those who are involved in living in the impoverished communities. So I told myself, I tell myself that time, I told myself that time that I have to do something. You know, if you're in the Philippines, if you're a part of a religious organization, there is this uh, song, it's called, in Filipino, no? it's called yung Tayong Lahat Ay May Pananagutan. I think Laura can translate that later. It means that we all, all uh, actually, we have all responsibilities, obligations to our fellow Yes, so so that that's you know, that's something for me. It's and then uh, of course when I reached college and you had this, uh, of course you were exposed to different kinds of uh, philosophies. <laughs> I started in the existentialism. Uh, was Gabriel Marcel mm. who taught me that uh, you have to live by the moment. You, know? you have to dress like this one. Huh? And but it's not enough. There has to be some kind of. In a way, you have to be objective. So I learn about Marxism. <laughs> so Marx has uh, also broadened my perspective in terms of you know uh, further, uh, uh, in terms of further uh, really uh, you know understanding 
what the society is, how the society develops from one stage to another, and what can be done in order to really do something about this struggles, these class contradictions. But it's really, it's really at the end of the day, it's really the people exactly. that motivates me. You know? Especially those who are, who are in their uh, condition, especially the poor, uh, the farmers, the workers. Keeps me going on. Now, uh, when, when I'm connected in human rights work in Karapatan, of course, I was exposed to different types of violations. I went to jail and heard the stories of the political prisoners. So I, I told myself that I really have to do something for these guys, for these political prisoners. So one day, they will be re reunited with their loved ones, with their families, and continue to do their work while they were still uh, outside the prison. So that keeps me going on. And uh, I hope uh, there will be a, uh, in science, you call it uh, mitosis, eh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, multiplication. No? Uh, I hope we can be this time we want to go vi viral. Diba, Laura? Yeah. <laughs> we yes. wanted more people to become like us, to do something yeah. for for the betterment of everybody. Ironically ironically, just so Jigs I, I think Jigs I, I already told you this, but um when I was in the Philippines, I wouldn't say I was I was really that active um, in the in the human rights scene or with social movements. I would say when I was when I was still a student um, at the University of the Philippines. Although I was really exposed to to the different societal issues there, um, compared to perhaps when when I was still in high school or yeah when I was younger. Like my upbringing, my upbringing is isn't re wasn't really exposed to. To you know, to what uh, the really uh, the real conditions of, for example, peasants or farmers. You know, I, I didn't I didn't really have that uh, that thinking. Um, but then, um, yeah, fortunately, like uh, when I arrived here in Belgium, I wanted to, I re I really tried to find a way to perhaps still be in touch with my Philippine roots. And yeah, what better way than to actually join a social movement? Um, so I, I joined Intel in twenty. Uh, 14, I believe, and since then it's been a really big part of, of my life. And it's and, and like my 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 activism. Um, I could call myself an activist now because, like, when I was a student, I would I would, I don't think I would have considered myself an activist when I was still in the Philippines. But now that I'm I'm here in Belgium, I would consider I actually now consider myself an activist. The fact that I've been working um, closely with the um, different different social movements, different different human rights defenders such as Jigs in, in the Philippines. Um, it's it's been a really um, great uh, great and enriching experience. But at the same time, you know, it's 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 really bittersweet um, because you, you do in the last few years, unfortunately, you, you do get to to know people um, who actually died or have have been sub subjected to uh, state violence or intimidation. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's really uh, it's tough. It's it's a it's a tough thing to be an activist right now. But at the same time, you know, it's the, so long as uh, as there's the struggle. If 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 the struggle the struggle of of peasants of farm vulnerable groups is still there, um, then the the fight will always continue. It's actually very dangerous right now to be a health worker. Um, surprisingly, in the Philippines, uh, the fact that yeah, uh, they are being red tagged. As communists, for example, or even being killed. Um, I think one one really one really big uh, happening last year for me was uh, the death of Zara Alvarez. Yes, yeah, Zara. It's Indeed. really so. Actually, we were shocked when we learned that uh, she was shot. And uh, I'm sorry. When I remember Sarah, it's really a, a very, uh, uh, it's really hard. Not only Sarah, but uh, other colleagues who are killed, who are languishing in jails. It's it's difficult to imagine what they are going through right now, and it's uh, it's good that we have this kind of. Uh, <laughs> conversation thanks Laura for it makes us um, strong each day to imagine that their colleagues were really you know that courageous 
to really, you know, to to carry on what we have been uh, struggling since we were, you know, part of this. Not only a campaign, it's like a resolve, it's like a commitment you know, to really do something about uh, social change. One campaign I would like to highlight, perhaps, is um, Viva Salutes Only Fighters Win, uh, which is which was a campaign um, to support different social movements, not only in the Philippines, but also in Palestine, um, in Congo, so in, in, in uh, a, a lot of countries in the South. Um, and uh, I, I was involved particularly on um, on online online uh, webinars uh, that we did, uh, which was really more of information and experience sharing. Uh, because perhaps not not everyone in, in Belgium would be aware of, of what's happening, for example, um, around health healthcare workers or human rights defenders in the Philippines um, during COVID. So um, yeah, last year uh, with the with the onset of the pandemic has been has been um, yeah has has been has has been a really particular um, uh, time to actually be able to amplify um, the messaging of, of social movements. I would say actually connecting connecting uh, different uh, social movements uh, around the right to health uh, from different countries not only about what's happening in the philippines how how um yeah how, how human rights defenders and healthcare workers are are faring uh back back, back home but also what's happening in, in palestine and what's interesting to see is like the i wouldn't say the similarities but perhaps the parallels that you could you could get from from both situations and the fact that there's there's really a lot of room um a lot of room for collaboration between between uh, the two the two uh the two countries for example or the, the yeah different social movements in in both countries you will recall uh, way back in 2010 there were 43 health workers who were uh, arrested and detained for more than 10 months and uh, I was on the stage when uh, a report, uh, a news came saying that uh, President Noino uh, Aquino has withdrawn the cases filed against the 43 health workers. So it's like, you know, wow, this is the moment because it's a, actually a product of a uh, collective work, both of the domestic and the international, in terms of, you know, uh, uh, pressuring our own government and really looking into the cases filed against the 43 health workers. And a week after that, after the announcement of President uh, Nonoy Aquino, the 43 health workers was finally released from prison. So, ah, wow, you can just imagine. I, I, actually, I haven't, uh, it didn't come to my mind that one day one of my wife, then, uh, Dr. Mary, will be uh, included in such a case of you know because they were just you know rendering a training first responders training but uh, it took her more than 10 months to go home <laughs> to go back home no she spent uh, more than uh, 10 months in the prison and uh, i was very glad because you know here are you guys viva salud uh, our other solidarity groups from abroad and of course the mass movement in the philippines it's like a uh, combination of all the efforts and you can just actually uh, see the fruits you know, of these collective efforts you know, done by so many uh, activists, done by so many people in just to, you know, to really uh, uh, affect the release of the, uh, the health workers. And that's one of the relevant moments you know, as an activist because it goes to show that you know, by doing a, a collective action we can achieve our goal we were able to mobilize all different sectors just for a single call to release the 43 health workers unlike before because you know in the philippines there are various sectors they have various issues but in that time during that time there is a single call to release the 43 health workers. That is one. The other one is the pressure coming from the international in solidarity groups. Imagine uh, different uh, in big international human rights organizations, including uh, uh, other health organizations, calling, no? uh, asking our government 
to withdraw the case and release the 40 developers. Then, of course, other fact, the, uh, the third one would be the, the consistent uh, play or the, the important role of mass media, the media, no, in really sustaining the issue from the day that they were arrested up to their release. No? So I think those are the three factors uh, I think uh, uh, that are uh, so relevant. And I think it can be replicated by other groups as well. You know, because sometimes when we do have a virus calls, sometimes when we wanted to affect, when we have uh, one, an impact to a particular call, it kind of, you know, uh, be diverted in such a manner if you have so many calls. You know? But if you do have a single call, then it can really affect a change or it can really impact. There will be a, a huge impact in terms of that. Uh, that's one of that's, uh, I think, uh, my reflection, my insight in that uh, particular experience of ours. What I've learned of, um, about being an activist is the fact that um, you will you will get pushback perhaps on um, on people you know, um, your loved ones, for example, or your friends who might not who might not share the same the same um, political views, for example um with you you will get pushed back um but that shouldn't be perhaps a, a hindrance um to the types to the types of campaigns or the types of ad advocacy that you that you're currently working on and are really passionate about the reality of what's happening now for example in the philippines or in, in other countries where you have a lot of human rights uh, violations and a lot of uh, extrajudicial killings for example or the fact that people are being, or like activists, for example, or students even, or workers, or just really normal citizens who are being red tagged as, as terrorists, like what's happening in the in the Philippines is actually it's something that's going on. It's just that, unfortunately, um, a lot of my fellow Filipinos don't see it that way, perhaps, or that um, yeah, because of their political inclinations or the the lack of political inclinations, they don't. They don't really see that that other perspective, or the perspective of those who are actually um, who are actually sacrificing uh, their lives, even they're sacrificing their time, sacrificing their lives just just to uh, ensure and uphold uh, democracy and, and the the rights of others, especially vulnerable groups. Sometimes, like people would say, yeah, you shouldn't really talk about. Uh, you know, politics are even very sensitive societal issues, such as killings, for example, uh, with with uh, with family members. But uh, at the same time, you know, it's um, it's it's a talk that you must have um, because it, you you as as an act activist, your role is to actually your your role is to actually highlight what's happening, right? And why why don't you do it in in your closer family circle, aside from aside from the wider circle that you actually serve? Because uh, yeah, in the end, like it's important for every individual, I think, naturally, to somehow get not not necessarily not necessarily get the validation, but perhaps just the acknowledgement <laughs> from from people uh, close to you that they, yeah um, that they they actually see where you're coming from as well. Um, uh, that's another point that I, I would say. Uh, that's another key learning for me is to be more open-minded, perhaps. For me. Is the immersion. First, as long as you're immersed in a particular situation, you're immersed with the uh, the communities you're with. That's one of the that's the most important learning, because when you're grounded, you can actually articulate. You can say with full conviction what you're saying, because you are with them. You're living with them. And you can really say what's uh, going through their minds and hearts. No? If you're also, you know, uh, doing work uh, collectively with them, no? Uh, meaning, for example, uh, how can I uh, advocate or campaign? Well, in fact, uh, if I didn't really, of course, uh, uh, for example, if I really did uh, visit, for example, the political prisoner ask them what are their situation, uh, experience the, the, the difficulties in terms of 
the, the processes in going to jails. If I didn't experience those, I cannot, you know, uh, say with much confidence that uh, these are the situation of the political prisoners. Don't stop from being, you know, uh, curious. In other terms, you have to be critical. Huh? Because for as long as you are critical, uh, you will always find any an answer or answers to those curiosities. No? But of course, uh, uh, bear in mind that, uh, of course, while we welcome uh, such, for example, being open-minded, uh, but as an activist, our, 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 I think our result, our commitment is to persuade people to take part to what we are doing and uh, make them understand or share with them what can be done, uh, especially when they are facing a situation that needs to be changed, that needs to do something no? in order to really effect uh, uh, change. For genuine social change, for yes. our society. Right. <laughs> Cheers. Salute.